everybody. Everybody, I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back, and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited, yet another day, because today at the Young's house, Gina Young is gonna share with you all how easy it is to make delicious corned beef and cabbage. This recipe right here, it's bomb. It's so easy to make. It doesn't require a lot of ingredients, and you know, make it Gina Young style, it's gonna be so tasty. Y'all never had my corned beef and cabbage before. You better make you some. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. Of course, you're gonna need some nice fresh cabbage. So right here, we have two nice heads of cabbage here. You're gonna need some fresh veggies. You will need a sweet green bell pepper. We have a red bell pepper and a sweet Vidalia onion. We also are gonna use two potatoes in this recipe and you're gonna need your corned beef. Now for this recipe, this is the corned beef that we're gonna be using, delicious. You can't have cabbage without cornbread, so we're gonna be making some cornbread. And you're gonna need a couple of spices so we can spice everything up. Here's what you'll need over this way. You will need just a little pinch of sugar and the sugar is optional, so you don't have to to use it. Red pepper flakes, parsley flakes, garlic powder, black pepper, and salt. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple yet so tasty recipe. Okay everyone, so one of the first things that we want to do is you're going to decide how you want your cabbage cut. Some people like to shred their cabbage. I'm going to show you how I like to do it today. Okay, so you're going to need a little bit of elbow grease because sometimes it's really hard to cut into, you know, your cabbage. We're just going to take our time and do what we can. You might see the table shaking a little bit. Okay. All right. So we're going to chop this bad boy down just like this. And then I'm going to wind up with the, the core. And the core starts here, and we're not gonna use the core, okay? So we're gonna cut around it this way. And you wanna get your sharpest knife, okay? Just like so. And this here, we're not gonna use that. That's the core, it's really hard. Some people like to use it, we're not gonna use it today. So here's how I like to chop my cabbage down. And after I cut my cabbage, we're gonna give it a nice wash. So if you take one of these quarters here, we're gonna do a number like this, and I just like to chop it just like so. Like I said, you might be the person that says you like your shredded, and if so, that's just fine. I'm gonna continue to chop up all of this cabbage, and when I come back, I'll share with you all what we'll do next. So the first thing we want to do is make sure you wash off your cabbage after you cut it. So take a look at what we've done. Here's what our cabbage looks like. I like nice big pieces like this. Okay, and we've washed it off. And you can see that I'm going to be using my wok today. You can use any pan you would like to use. Now, in the bottom of the pan, I did put a little bit of chicken broth. Just a little bit, okay? And literally, it's just about this much. And the reason why using so little bit is because um, the cabbage is kind of like collard greens or, or greens. They make their own water. So as they release its water, you know, the liquid will start to fill up and mix up with the chicken broth. Okay, so now you want to decide whether you want to use potatoes in your cabbage. Who doesn't love potatoes and cabbage? I know I do. Here at the Young's house, we love potatoes in our cabbage. So what we're going to do is we are going to dice up some potatoes. We're not gonna put them in right now because if we put them in right now, they'll kind of turn into mush. Okay, I wanna put them in when the cabbage is halfway done. That way, the time, the timing of the cabbage getting done and the potatoes getting done will kind of meet together and my potatoes don't have to turn to mush. So here's how we're gonna cut the potatoes. So we're gonna do a number just like that and I don't wanna overwhelm the cabbage with the potatoes. So I'm just gonna use just a little bit. That's all you really need. See that right there? Beautiful, that's what I, That's how I like it to be cut. You know, I don't want teeny tiny pieces, but I don't, you know, I don't want it too big either. All right, 
So we're gonna attack this one as well. I hope you all are having an amazing day today. Let me know, let me know in the comment section below if you've ever had corned beef and cabbage. All right, we're gonna to continue to do the same thing with this potato and I'll be right back. So we have all of the potatoes nice and cut. I did cut one more potato, but you see it's not too many. And I just have it in some cold water so that they don't oxidize. And oxidize is when they change color, um, when they hit the air. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to chop up our beautiful veggies. You really don't have to use different color bell peppers, but keep in mind that each bell pepper does give off different flavors. Okay, and I also like it for decoration purposes. It really makes the dish nice and bright and colorful, and I love that. Okay, so we're going to cut the red and the green just like so. But let's talk about something really quickly. What I like to do is when I put my bell peppers and my onions in, I like to put half of the bell peppers in now. Okay, because those bell peppers are just going to kind of disintegrate down into flavor land and they'll get mushy and that's okay. Okay, but now the second batch that we put in, they're going to be put in at the last minute and they stay nice, bright and vibrant and they have a little bit of texture. So I like to do it that way. If you want to put all of yours in at the same time, guess what? It's okay. It's okay. Okay. It's just what I like to do when I make mine. Okay, and you don't need a whole lot because bell peppers, they do have a strong flavor and they'll let off plenty of flavor into your cabbage. Now, there's a lot of people that they love to use a little bit of fresh thyme in their cabbage. And if you're that person, absolutely put you some fresh thyme in there, okay? But not too much, maybe two sprigs or so. And then um, when the cooking process is done, just make sure you take those, uh, the stem of the time you know out okay so let's go ahead and put these bell peppers right on top just like so okay and then we'll attack this onion in hopes that it doesn't make me cry i don't want to cry today <laughs> i just don't i've tried all your tricks that everyone said to do so my eyes won't water and none of them work <laughs> they don't i'm going to continue to chop up these other bell peppers and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have a couple of slices of onion that we're gonna put in. Onion is gonna bring you a really great flavor, all right? And if you have some onion powder, throw some in. Okay, so now let's cut up this onion, all right? Just like so, I'm gonna try to do this very quickly. <laughs> Onions are not friends with my eyes. All right, get it in there just like so, great flavor there. Okay, now, we are gonna use a lid. If you don't have a lid, you know you're gonna use aluminum foil. And the purpose for that is to get this cabbage to cooking so it can kinda of shrink down a little bit. And it will do just that. So we're not gonna season it right now, okay? Uh, once it starts to shrink down and I feel like I can go in and stir it, if I stir it right now, it's going to go all over my pan. We're going to let it shrink down a little bit, come back and season it, and then I'll show you what we're going to do with this gorgeous corned beef. So now let's go ahead and make our cornbread. You can't have cabbage without cornbread. And I know a lot of you all freak out when you see me use pre-made cornbread mix. I, I always bump it up. Whatever type it is, I bump it up, I put a little bit of sugar, you know, we put eggs and milk and sometimes we use buttermilk. Like today, we're gonna use a little bit of shredded cheese, okay? And here's the thing, you can put as much as you like. Don't overwhelm the situation, you know, but that much right there, like the bag that I'm using today made by, I believe, Marie Callender. It just tells you to add water. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add some milk, okay? The same amount that they asked for, I'm gonna give it a nice stir and we're gonna put it into our oiled pan, 350 degrees until it's nice and done. And we have Prince and Polo. You can see Polo, he is actually playing with a piece of ice. They play ice hockey here and they have so much fun. Prince is just kinda relaxing. Ice hockey is very, <laughs> Very much fun for the dogs here at the Young's house. 
Okay, so we have the cornbread in the oven. The dogs are playing ice hockey. I do want to talk about the corned beef. So many of you are going to say, Gina, I thought you were going to make corned beef and then put it in there. Well, listen here. Here's what we are going to do. I'm going to lead you to my other corned beef and cabbage video because it's amazing. And that is where I made the homemade corned beef and then we put it in the cabbage. But this one right here, this one is far more better than that recipe. <laughs> so figure out which one you want to watch. Okay, this, corn, this is real corned beef. Okay, it's just kind of chopped up. So now it does come with the little key here that you need to turn in order to open up the corned beef. I have no clue why they put this on here. And if it breaks, you're gonna have to take a knife because you can't use a can opener to open it. And it's the worst. <laughs> I hate opening it, but it's so delicious once you get it open. I can eat this whole can alone by itself. All right, so once we get this open, I'm gonna show you what you need to do with your corned beef. I am so excited. Corn beef and cabbage is my all time favorite and it's so easy to make. So now let's take a peek in at the corned beef and I'm using a can and a half. You can use more or you can use less. Like I said, this is real corned beef. All right, it's just nice and chopped up like I like it. So now let's take a peek in over here at the cabbage and you can really see that yes, it has, you know, kind of shrunk down a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring some of the cabbage that's in the bottom, we're going to bring it to the top and push that cabbage that's at the top to the bottom. And then we're going to go in, put some nice seasoning in here. Now, when you're making cabbage several times, we're going to go in and season it and taste it. Okay, a little bit of red pepper flakes, but if you have someone in your family that's not a fan of the heat, don't put it in there. Or you can put it on, you know, as you make your own plate. Okay, we need some black pepper for sure. Salt, not too much, but you do need it. Perfect. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of parsley flakes, dry parsley flakes only, just for color. We're gonna put garlic powder, you need it. All right, and, and a pinch or two of sugar. You don't have to use the sugar, but I always do. Okay, so we're not gonna put the, um, potatoes in just yet. I need for the cabbage to cook a little bit longer. And when we put the potatoes in, that's when we're going to put our corned beef in. Our, cor our cor uh, get it together, spit it out, Gina. Our cornbread will be done. I'm going to say an amazing prayer. You all are going to get that first bite. When it comes to making cabbage here at the Young's house, there's two things that's definitely a must to have alongside of your uh, cabbage. One is, we, we, we know, one is the cornbread. The second one is the plantain. Plantain, I, I know so many of you always ask me, what does it taste like? Um, when you purchase them, if you want it to be nice and sweet, you want the kind that does have lots of the black on it. It does look like a banana that's spoiled. It's not a banana. This is a plantain. You can find them uh, yellow. You can find them green. When they're yellow and when they're green, uh, they're not as sweet, but when you get these dark marks on them, this is how I like to eat them. So what we're going to do, it, it, here's, what it, here's what it tastes like, because so many people you want to know. Well, to me, it tastes like a potato mixed with a banana. And you all that are familiar with me, you know that I don't like bananas. Okay, so it doesn't, it has a little bit of a banana taste just a little bit but it tastes like a potato too it is delicious and i'm going to show you how to make it today so you see that i cut the ends off okay and then i score down the middle and then you can peel it you know really simply i'll do it one more time for you now this skin is not like the banana skin it's a little bit harder to take off okay just like that, and then you take it off. These can be boiled, and guess what? They are the best thing when you eat them boiled. I do have a video for where I believe I made Haitian food, and we boiled them, and they were delicious. So I just like to cut them on an angle, just like so, and in my pan, take a look over here at my pan. I have a little bit of oil that we're gonna heat up on a medium-high heat, and back over to the plantains, I like to cut them on a slant. 
You can cut them however you want. Really, you can. Or you can fry them whole if you like. Okay, so I'm going to cut up this whole banana. We're going to fry some plantains. I know, I know I just called it banana, but you all get the jest. You know what I meant. <laughs> and our cabbage is done. I'm over at the larger stove. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put those extra bell peppers in, and we're gonna put our corned beef up. Remember, the corned beef only has to heat up. It is fully cooked. And those veggies, they only have to cook for a little while. We wanna keep them nice and vibrant. And by doing that is not cooking it, you know, for so long. Let me grab. A bigger spoon we're gonna to toss this around just like so and then let's take a peek in over here what I decided to do was cook the potatoes by themselves they're completely done I've drained the water once I get everything mixed into this cabbage then we'll toss around those beautiful potatoes now that the cabbage is almost done let's start on our plantains I have some oil vegetable oil some people like to put a little bit of brown sugar on theirs but I'm gonna be honest I've done it before it's not needed but if you're that person you want to do it throw a little bit of brown sugar on the top you know at the very end when they're just about done it's gonna give you a little bit of caramelization you know I'm not really going to show you this process because it's really simple you cook both sides until it's nice beautiful and golden brown Here's our plantains, look how beautiful. Doesn't matter what color you get them, you can do them nice and light like this, you can make them nice and dark, whatever, they're gonna be delicious and they're nice and sweet. So they're done. The corned beef and cabbage is, is done and we've mixed in those potatoes. Take a look at this right here. Oh my goodness, if this isn't a dinner for you, this is definitely something you wanna make for your loved ones and families and friends. Listen here everybody, if you all enjoy, this here video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everyone you know, tell the whole world about Gina Young, what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. I'm gonna plate this up. I'm gonna say an amazing prayer. You all are gonna get that first bite. Take a look at it, everybody. Gina Young style. Corn beef and cabbage, plantains and cornbread, make you some. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful meal today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, when I come back, you all are going to get that bite. Take one more look. Amen, once again to my prayer. Hold on, the dogs think it's time right now. Wait, guys. Not time right now. <laughs> okay, take a look at this gorgeous cornbread. It's nice and thick. It's sweet, and it has a little bit of cheese in the inside. Beautiful. But the first thing I want you all to try, try the plantain. Go on, take a bite. Delicious. I know, I know, I know, I know. And look at that. I'm going to give you all a bite of this corned beef and cabbage. Oh, yeah, with a nice hunk of potato. Just like so. Look at this. Amazing. I know. One more bite. Wait, guys. Wait, guys. Look at that. And as always, God bless you all. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Good night.